we've heard from a number of people that this is sort of the hidden gem. It's people's favorite state park that we had never even heard of. And, and I think I will now add it to my list of favorite state parks as well. Welcome to Heft State Park. At 340 acres, Heft State Park isn't necessarily a really large park, but it, it has a lot to offer. Uh, it has about a mile of shoreline on Lake Huron, and something very unique for something on Lake Huron, it has sand dunes and a good-sized beach. It's down a little bit right now because the water levels are so high in Lake Huron, so the beach isn't as large as usual. But the fact that there are sand dunes on Lake Huron is very unusual. Yeah, that's not something that you see. And if you're not familiar with Michigan, you probably wouldn't know that because you think of the Great Lakes, you think of sand dunes, if you've seen any of the Pure Michigan commercials. But that really is a Lake Michigan west side of the state thing. Lake Huron is known for its rocky beaches with Potosky stones, fossils, and that nature. And so having these sand dunes over here is very unique. And it's a big draw for the people that come to this park. And from what we heard from people who work and come here regularly, it's starting to draw people from other parts of the state who have suddenly discovered that, oh, there's sand dunes over on Lake Huron too, and we know where they're at, let's go enjoy those. And especially because as we have experienced just in our many years, the beaches on the west side of the state fill up fast. I mean, you've got Grand Haven, South Haven, Ludington, and they are booked all the time. And so more people are coming over here to the east side to get that same beach feel that they might have on the west side but in this case they get to see the sunrise instead of the sunset <laughs> yeah it is the sunrise side of the state uh this land was donated by ph heft and that's who it is named for heft state park he was a lot of things in this area he took over his father's lumber business he ran the local department store the, he was a township supervisor for something like 40 years yeah. he was just a big name in the rogers city area which is where the park is located and i think he just, again, like we've seen in many other cases, saw what was here, the beauty, the natural part of it, and felt that it really needed to belong to the state so that everybody could enjoy it. Yeah, he ended up donating the land to the state, and this became a state park in the early 1920s. It's one of the original 14, as they like to say here, um, and they'll be celebrating their actual centennial in the next few years, but they're yeah. helping us and everybody else celebrate the state park centennial this year. A big part of keeping any state park going is the Friends of programs. And, and we're starting to see that more just because they take a lot of passion in their state parks. They're, they're residents, they're people who have come here for many years, and it's a good way for them to give back. In many cases, they're able to raise funds to help improve the parks through playgrounds or barrier-free accessibility options. And we had a unique opportunity to meet up with one of the Friends of Hef State Park she gave us kind of a behind the scenes tour of what this park has to offer. And let's hear it from her in her own words, what she has to say about this park. So Arlene, what, what can you tell me about this park here? We're at Heff State Park up in Ro the Rogers City area. We are, um, I represent the Friends of Heff State Park, which is a nonprofit group inside the park that raises money to provide uh, equipment that isn't available otherwise. We have funded the kids' playground here. We've funded a basketball and street hockey area, um, new benches. Uh, we bought an AED last year oh. for the park. That was uh, something that we'd been needing for a very long time. Uh, what brought me here, I think, was the sunrise side and the beauty of this park. It, um, it has all that most campers really want, uh, sites that are wooded sites, but yet not desolate sites. Very camper friendly, very dog friendly park. Um, we are happy to welcome anybody at our park. We're getting many more west side campers <laughs> now uh, from Muskegon. Now that they discovered this is the better side. Yes, we consider ourselves to be the undiscovered gem. So, so what is there to do at this park? What's it, what at, is it known for? At the park, um, inside the park, of course, is the pavilion area here, which is an historic building. Just to see it and walk through it and then make the trek down to the beach is a real treat for our campers. Um, we do have uh, explorer guide programs that are right up by site number one that go on throughout the summer. 
Yeah, I saw that one of the naturalists was doing a thing on bears today. Yep, and we have done such fun things as uh, lamprey eels, where Ooh. there are actually live lamprey oh. eels there, and kids get to see them and touch Yay. them. Yes, <laughs> so because there's a biological station just up the road that does research oh, cool. in Lake Huron on lamprey eels. So, but um, out about uh, probably 14 miles from here is Akiak Falls. If you haven't heard of that, it's Lower Michigan's only waterfall. So that is what we recommend that campers take part of their day because it doesn't take long to go to Akiak Falls. They're beautiful. Kids and dogs, everybody swims in it. So Very cool. yeah, it's beautiful in the fall. When there's a lot there's to nobody. see around here. Then. There is a lot to see. And of course, headed north, you're going towards the Mackinac City and the Mackinac Island. So. Now, how long have you been part of the Friends Group? The group was actually established in 2007, and I'm an official lifetime original member. <laughs> well, good for so, you. Yeah. We appreciate and, those folks. Yeah, and I enjoy it. Um, as you may have noticed when I go around in the campground in our golf cart, the Hefty Hauler, um, I like to stop and talk with folks, find out where they're from, and what brought them to our state park, which in many cases now is... You had an opening, <laughs> but it is now bringing them back. Well, so. that's good. I mean, we do see that the parks are full, and I think you guys have said that most weekends here the park is full, holidays, it's, yep, you know, for sure. capacity, and for sure. we're, yep. we're loving to see that. So yeah. I'm sure you are as well. We are happy to have campers come into our park store. As you can see, um, we're celebrating, all state parks are celebrating the 100 year centennial, which is obviously what you're celebrating yep. by what you're doing. And uh, we're just happy to uh, provide campers with a few odd items that they might need that they didn't have and t-shirts and sweatshirts and caps. Um, but all the money that we raise stays within this park, so. And we have seen that through the playground and exactly. the things that Ex you've been able to provide. Exactly, right. So it's, uh, it's a treat for us. Uh, I'm a transplant, what they call a transplant up here. So I come from downstate, retired. And uh, just once I found this park and this group, uh, just totally committed. Well, great. Well, thank you for our tour today. This was most wonderful. Yep, we, my we pleasure. the behind the scenes tour and the information that we you're, wouldn't have gotten otherwise. You're so. very welcome. So enjoy your stay, whatever you're doing from here and safe travels. Thank you. The Friends of Heft State Park group work really well with the DNR staff here. You can tell they have an excellent relationship and, and they're really focused on investing in this park and making it the best they can for the visitors. And you see that in the things that they've done recently. The campground, uh, they've been working on improving that. They actually took out, I want to say like 20 Almost some sites. 20 sites, yeah. Right around 20 sites they removed so that they'd have a little more space. And they now have pull through sites for people who want to come here with larger rigs because it's been difficult for them to do that before they made that improvement. While they were doing that improvement, they also went through and updated the electric. So everybody now has their own power pole on site, some of them with 50 amp. Yeah, not every site, but as they went through and redid, because as we've seen and we've mentioned before, Again, this is a park that was built in the 1920s. It wasn't designed for these larger rigs. And so now they're making accommodations for that to draw more people in, to allow them to come here without short circuiting and having brown outs. Uh, that's something people complain about with the air conditioners running. So now with everybody having their own pole and the 50 amps and the pull through sites, uh, this park is, it's already been super popular and busy, but it's gonna be even more so of a draw going forward. And they've been trying to do other things. So they have a, they have one mini cabin here mm -hmm. that actually somebody on staff just re, redid or yeah. renovated the inside of yeah, it's, it's really cute. It's super cute. cute. Like they put new wood paneling up, they redid the floor, they've got new curtains. Uh, and so it's, it's one of those things where if you want to get away for the weekend, but you don't have a trailer or you don't have a RV or a tent and you want to go, it sleeps four. It's got two bunk beds and a pull out couch. There's no amenities other than that. So there's no bathroom, there's no sink, shower, and it's bring your own linens. But it's a great way for a family to get out for a weekend and be here at the beach, be here in nature, but without having, if you say, you know, if you think about it, the headache of having to pull something, tow something, deal with all that, if that's not your style, but you still want to get out here. Yeah, the mini cabins to me in state parks make me think of, it's kind of like camping in a building because it really <laughs> is, right? I mean, you bring your own stuff with you and you have to, you know, you have to use the facilities here. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a kitchen, any of that kind of stuff. Um, so you're kind of tent camping, but you're in a building. 
Um, yeah. But it but it could be a lot of fun. Now, if but you're you, not going to float away. <laughs> you're not going to float away, which we have done in our we was our last tent camping trip. Um, but if you want to bring a larger group or your family, there is something really special here at Heft, and that is, I think that it's the Sears it's Roebuck the Lodge. Sears Roebuck Lodge. So the story behind that is back in the 20s, Sears and Roebuck, the company, sold houses. You as a family could purchase a house, and it would became a kit house. There were different models, depending on your size, your family, and your layout. It got delivered, and it was set up as a house. And Heft State Park purchased one of those kits in like the 19, late 20s, I think 29, to be used for the park superintendent, and the park manager here. And so the family lived in it. And, and they did for many years until they did away with the program of the park managers living on site and, and let them go buy their own houses in the community. But in this case, they've turned what was that lodge and that, or, or what was that house into more of a lodge. And it sleeps up to 12 people. It's fully furnished linens and refrigerator, stove, games, everything that you could want in a house is here in this cabin. Yeah, it's basically if you want to go spend some time at a state park in a house, it's here and, and you just show up. You bring yeah. food. You'd have to bring your own food. food. But that's it. Other than that, everything <laughs> is provided. And, you know, they do a, a quick turnaround when somebody leaves. It's, it's a minimum of two nights stay. But, and it's, it's booked almost solid, they said, for a year. So... You can, unlike most state park like campsites, you can book six months mm -hmm. out. The Sears Roebuck Lodge here at Heft, you can camp or you can um, reserve one year in advance. In advance, and they said that it's almost entirely booked that far <laughs> out. So you got to get on it if you watch for when you want to want to go. But so like at least every other day, probably they're doing a quick turnaround. The DNR staff does it here. They clean everything top to bottom, change the linens. They do a really good job of of maintaining it for everyone. And then you just show up with your food and your family and have some mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, I think it's a great way if you do want to get out, even if you do have a trailer, I think that's a good for a family retreat type option. If you've got, uh, you know, siblings, cousins, whatever, you want a mini little family reunion, I think that's a great way to go. I'd, I'd consider doing something like that. And what's it's about $150 a night. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's way more than $22 of a, of a camp fee. But if you bring two families together, like we said, it sleeps 12, you're still talking way cheaper than going to ho a hotel where you only have a bed. I mean, like I said, this is a full kitchen. So for $150 a night, minimum of two nights, it's still way cheaper, more, much more economical. And you have a whole house and the beach right out your front door. Yeah, you're in Heft State Park. <laughs> this is a great state park with a lot of options. Yeah, I love this Wh one. Whether you're talking about how you want to stay, you can camp, you can go in a mini cabin, you can go in the Sears Roebuck Lodge. Um, there's things to do, whether it's uh, the beach. Oh, there's a bike path that goes all the way to Rogers City. It's paved, paved bike path. Paved bike path. There's hiking trails, several miles of hiking trails out here. Yep. Um, and just, I think it's just a good getaway. We, we've heard from a number of people that this is sort of the hidden gem. It's people's favorite state park that we had never even heard of. And, and I think I will now add it to my list of favorite state parks as well. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> one. I'd like to come back here and just spend some time relaxing. It'd be a lot of fun. In addition to maybe taking a bike ride to Roger City, you could take a car ride. I think it's about 14 miles to Akiok Falls, which I was at earlier this year and did a video on and mispronounced. <laughs> I now know that it's Akiok Falls, um, but that's a really, you know, pretty place to go hang out. And there's just, you know, it's one of these things where you're in an area of the state where there's other things to do besides just at the park. Yeah, Roger City is known as Limestone City. And just south of the park, almost bordering it really, is the largest limestone core, open pit mining limestone quarry in the world. And it has a viewing platform, so you can go down there. It's public, oh, you know, there's a public area. And what's crazy is that there's these massive trucks. I mean, they're just huge. As you look down into the quarry, you're going to see all the big trucks. And they look like little Tonka trucks that, you know, you kids play with. But they're actually gigantic. And especially when you realize that you're standing probably almost a mile away from them looking down into the quarry and they're just massive. And, and we were told, I think actually uh, Blake, the park supervisor, told us that you can fit four like, adult humans in the wheel well part of the truck. And that's how big they are. The trucks are so big, they can haul like up to 195 tons of rock when they're hauling them out of there. A, and they said a train car hauls 110 tons. So to give that some perspective, Spectre. these things are massive, but yeah. they look... This big. They look this big when you're looking at them, but you but you realize even being that far away from them and they look huge, even though they look tiny, they look huge. 
then you're going to realize when you're up close to them how big they actually are. So I, it's kind of a weird description, but they do really look like little Tonka trucks driving around in like a little kid's sandbox. <laughs> That's actually just kind of cool. It's something that we didn't know was here, but it is one of the major industries for this area. Um, and many of the barges and freighters that you see out on Lake Huron and the Great Lakes, they will come here, they will get loaded up with the limestone and then go back on their way. And when we were out there, we saw a couple that were waiting offshore, ready to be filled and, and then go on their way. So that's just something to do here if you're in the area, if you want to stop by and see that. It's certainly a unique thing to see. And yeah, as you mentioned, there's a sort of a viewing platform where you can look down into the, the quarry and see what they're doing. And then there's also a public area where you can actually go out by the harbor where they're um, loading up the ship. So you get to see some of that too. It's just a really unique experience, I think. Yeah. And if that's not your thing, if I know a lot of people like lighthouses. So just north of here is another lighthouse. Um, so if you're on that tour, you can stay here and go up in that. Uh, as well as we've heard that there's a really good bakery that we're hoping to check out that's just uh, just outside the park borders that you can ride your bike to from the path. She said it's on that. So uh, we've heard there's really good cinnamon rolls and bread and, and hopefully we can uh, taste test those and we'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> So after much indecisiveness, we settled on this wonderful looking cinnamon roll, which may or may not last till tomorrow morning's breakfast. And the Michigan special, cherries, chocolate chips, pecans, oatmeal, maybe some other goodness too. Definitely recommend coming here. Yeah, and, and as Arlene from Friends of Heft Park said to us, you know, she she's a little biased, obviously, this is her park, but she says she likes to think of Heft as sort of base camp. You come here, and then there's all kinds of things to see and do in northern Michigan, but you always want to come back here to Heft. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's really not that far from Sheboygan, Mackinac City either, so if you're wanting to do the northern Michigan tour, this would I would consider this a good home base as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So no matter where you're traveling or where you would consider home base, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.